All right, in our first example, we're going to compare data sets displayed in dot plots. So in our example, Sawyer has narrowed his car search down to two different types of cars. To make an informed decision, he gathers data on estimated highway fuel efficiency in miles per gallon of the two different types of cars. The dot plots show the data for each type. So what this is showing is how many miles each car can get per gallon in miles per gallon. So the two dot plots we can see visually look different. In type one, we see there's kind of a cluster between you know, 33 and 38, 34, 35, 36, a little bit higher. A bit of an outlier here at 41. So this car at 41 gets more miles per gallon than these cars down here. So that's what that is saying. In type two, you can see that the data is a little bit higher. We're not clustered in lower miles per gallon. We've got an outlier up here at 51. Um, so these cars in general are going to get more miles per gallon um, when driving on the highway. So the first question, if highway fuel efficiency is the most important feature to Sawyer, which type of car should Sawyer purchase? So based on that, he should purchase the type two vehicle that he researched we can see that the miles per gallon is a little bit higher than what the type one cars are getting while driving on the highway. All right, so part B, Sawyer wants more information about the fuel efficiency of each type of car. So he calculates the mean and the mean absolute value. Oops, mean absolute deviation the mean and the mean absolute deviation of the two data sets. How can these measures help him make a more informed decision? So as a reminder, you guys have seen mean, that's your average in the past. That is where you take the sum of all your values and you divide it by the total number of values in the data set. So to find the mean of the type one car, we would add up all of those values and the sum, oh, let me hear, type one, whoa, what did that, that is, what is, okay. <laughs> type one, uh, the total is 572 and there were 16 cars. So that gives us a mean of 35.75. For type two, the type two cars he was looking at, the sum was 644. So doing a little bit of math for you here. Divided by the total of 16 cars gave us a mean of 40.25. So you can see that one has a higher average than the other. So type one has a higher average of miles per gallon um, in terms of fuel efficiency in the, on the highway. They're also asking us to calculate the mean absolute deviation. So buckle in, this one's gonna be a bit more work. I'm gonna try to fit it in here. So you might wanna write small. We will do it together for just the one type one vehicle. And then I'll just tell you what it is for the second one. We don't need to write it all out for both. So just a reminder, the MAD, the mean absolute deviation will tell us on average how far each data point is away from the mean. How reliable is the mean um, to use as, a, as one of our statistical values? Um, so what we do is we find the distance between each data point and the mean. So we'll just do this for the type one. Let me switch colors for you here. All right, so our type one car, we're gonna take each data point. So we had a data point at 33, and we're gonna subtract that from the mean. And so we're gonna take the absolute value. So 33 minus 35.75. That's gonna give you a negative number, and we're just gonna take the positive value, which is a 2.75. And then just so we don't have to write things out um, a lot of times, how many 33s did we have in our data set? We had two of those. So that's going to tell us how many times we have a two points or the 33. Um, we also had a, 
miles per gallon of 34. So we take our absolute value of 34 minus 35.75. Um, that's going to give us a negative number, but we're going to make it positive 1.75. And then how many cars had uh, miles per gallon of 34? We had three of those. So I don't have to write it out three times. We'll just write it out once and take note that there are three of those. Um, we had 35. So we're going to take 35 minus the mean, 35.75. And this is just telling us how far away is each value from the mean. So this one is a 0.75 away from the mean. Again, absolute value. We're just using positives because we're talking distance. And how many 35s did we have in our data set? We had three of those. Um, all right, so 36 is our next one. So we take 36 minus 35.75. And we get 0.25. And how many of those were there? We had three 36s. All right, I'm going to try to see if I can write smaller. Because <laughs> we have more to fit in. Okay, our next one is 37. Take the absolute value of 37 minus our average of 35.75 gives us 1.25. Now these are going to be positive, so we'll just leave them positive. And how many 37s do we have in our data set? We had two. Um, we also have a 38. So 30, absolute value of 38 minus the mean of 35.75 gives us 2.25. And we had two of those. And then we had 41. So the absolute value of 41 minus 35.75 gives us 5.25. So that was a bit of an outlier. You can see that it's the furthest away from the mean. And we only had one of those. So what we do now is we want to find the average of all of these numbers. So we're going to add these up and divide by how many there are. Now we did do a little, we took a little bit of a shortcut by keeping track of how many occurrences we had. So here's what that's going to look like. We had two cars that were 2.75 away from the mean. So we're going to say 2 times 2.75. We're going to add to that we had three cars that were 1.75 away from the mean. So 3 times 1.75. We had three cars that were 0.75 away from the mean. Maybe I can just move this over. All right. Uh, okay. So three cars that were 0.75. We had three cars that were 0.25 away from the mean. Oh, and here's why I started to write small. Let's see, we had two cars that were 1.25. And that was not supposed to be an equal sign. That won't let me erase it, nice. That's a plus. I'm just going to move down here two cars that were 1.25 and we had two cars that were 2.25 and one car that was 5.75. So if we add all of that together, we get 26 and there were 16 cars in this data set. So if we divide that by 16, we get a mean absolute deviation of about 1.63. We're doing a little bit of rounding. So that tells us that on average, each data point was 1.63 away from the mean. So that was for type 1. All right, so we won't go through all that for type 2. I'll just tell you that type 2 had a mean absolute deviation of 2.94. Now, because type 2 seemed like, hey, that's a, those cars had better gas mileage on the highway, um, if their mad mean absolute deviation is 2.94, that means that there's more variation within the type 2 cars. 
So it could mean that the expected fuel efficiency is less reliable for type two cars. All right, Whew. that was some good math there. All right, so last question, how does the outlier in the second data set affect the mean and the MAD, the, the mean absolute deviation? So if we look at the data set, um, type two had a more extreme outlier. This 51 was significantly higher than the other ones. This 41, I said it was a bit of an outlier. It's just a little bit higher. So hopefully we can see that 51 is a true outlier. And without having, we could calculate all this again. Um, I won't take time for that in this video, but I just want you to know how an outlier will affect a mean and the mean absolute deviation, because that's another average of something. Any outlier will raise or lower a mean or a mean absolute deviation. How do you know if it's going to raise it or lower it? Well, if it's a higher outlier, it's going to raise it. If it's an outlier on the lower end, it will lower the mean. So it does pull that mean um, to higher or lower values depending on where the outlier is. So because the outlier was a higher number in the second data set, it will absolutely raise the mean and the mean absolute deviation.